Theo Ratliff was a shot blocker that would stuff anyone in everyone's shot with his elite athleticism and ability to rim run being the perfect complimentary energy guy on lots of teams over his career. All along the way, becoming an all-star, two-time all-defensive team, and leading the league in blocks three separate times. This is a look back on Theo Ratliff's career. Theo Ratliff was born and raised in Demopolis, Alabama, and would go on to play his high school basketball for Demopolis High School. Ratliff was not highly recruited at the time, though, but would attend an Alabama basketball camp that would help him get noticed more. But bigger schools were still not really looking at him, and they were telling him he wasn't going to be playing much and have to sit early on a redshirt. All but one school made Ratliff a priority, and guaranteed playing time. That school would be Wyoming, so the choice became clear, Ratliff would be a cowboy. Ratliff would learn the game early on, playing behind future NBA player and Reggie Slater, crediting Slater for his growth and preparing him to be more physical like the NBA. As Slater would move on and go pro, Ratliff would soon prove to be one of the best defensive players in the country at Wyoming eventually becoming a two-time WAC All-Defensive player, also becoming a first-team All-WAC two times despite team struggles. Theo Ratliff by his senior year would be averaging 14.4 points, 7.5 rebounds, and an astounding 5.1 blocks. Ratliff would go down as one of the best collegiate shot blockers of all time by his career end, with 425 total block shots in his career, which is still a school record today that is unlikely to be touched. The NBA would soon come calling to see if Ratliff's defense would translate to the next level, so with the 18th pick in the 1995 NBA Draft, Theo Ratliff would be selected by the Detroit Pistons. Now Theo Ratliff would be joining a Detroit team led by Grant Hill, Allen Houston, Otis Thorpe, and Joe Dumars. Theo Ratliff his rookie year would carve out a role in the team playing as the 8th man where he would average 4.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks, helping the Pistons go 46-36, and 36, making the playoffs as a 7 seed. The Pistons would not be in the playoffs for long though, as they would run into the buzzsaw that was Shaquille O'Neal, Penny Hardaway, and the Orlando Magic, going down in a sweep, having no answers for Shaq. Ratliff would only play in one game this series, for a total of 4 minutes. Entering his sophomore season, Theo Ratliff would be playing a similar role as the 8th man, Seeing his numbers be similar in 5.8 points, 1.5 blocks, and 3.4 rebounds. The Pistons would improve again going 54 and 28 with Grant Hill ever improving taking on more responsibility because Allen Houston had left in the offseason in free agency. The Pistons were back in the playoffs as a 5 seed playing against the Atlanta Hawks and the Hawks were led by Dikembe Mutombo, Christian Leitner, and Steve Smith. The series would be close with games alternating, but ultimately the Hawks would come out on top with Detroit having no answers for any of the Hawks' big three. Again this postseason, Ratliff wouldn't be playing much, only played in three games, averaging 2.7 points, 1.3 blocks, and 1.3 rebounds. Ratliff would enter next season playing more for the Pistons early on, but they would be struggling more this season. As a result, the Pistons would try to find new life via a trade. Theo Ratliff would be traded by the Detroit Pistons with Aaron McKee, a first round pick that would be Carlos Delfino later on, to the Philadelphia 76ers for Eric Montross, Jerry Stackhouse, and a second round pick that would be Alex Acker. Theo Ratliff was joining a struggling 76ers team led by a young Allen Iverson, but Ratliff would find himself playing starter minutes for the first time in his career in Philadelphia, helping see his game and numbers improve to 9.9 .9 points. 3.1 blocks and 6.7 rebounds on the season between Detroit and Philadelphia. Despite Ratliff's personal growth, the 76ers would struggle this season, going 31 and 51, missing the playoffs. Next year, Theo Ratliff would step up his game again in the starting role, playing in all 50 games in the lockout shortened year, where he would average 11.2 points, 3 blocks, and 8.1 rebounds, helping Ratliff earn NBA All Defensive Second Team. With Ratliff's growth and Allen Iverson starting to become a superstar talent in the NBA, the 76ers would improve, going 28-22, making the playoffs as a 6 seed. The 76ers in Round 1 would face the Orlando Magic with Penny Hardaway and Nick Anderson. The 76ers had entered the series as underdogs, but Allen Iverson would make the 76ers look like they were the favorites, taking over the series, pushing the 76ers into the next round, winning the series 3-1. In round 2, the 76ers would match up against the Indiana Pacers that had a balanced team in Reggie Miller, Rick Smits, Jalen Rose, 
Mark Jackson, and the Davis Twins. The series would have multiple close games thanks to Iverson, but it was clear Allen Iverson alone could not beat the Indiana Pacers, seeing the 76ers get swept. Over the playoffs, Theo Ratliff would average 7.3 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 2.6 blocks. Next year, the 76ers would be looking very similar to the year prior, seeing Ratliff playing the same role, where he would average 11.9 points, 3 blocks, and 7.6 rebounds, but would miss some time due to injury, as the 76ers would go on to go 49-33, and getting a 5 seed. In round 1, the 76ers would face the Charlotte Hornets, with Eddie Jones and Derek Coleman leading the way. In the series when it mattered most, Allen Iverson would take over again, helping the 76ers win the series 3-1. In round 2, the 76ers would get a matchup against the Pacers again. The 76ers would put more of a fight up this time, but ultimately the 76ers could not seem to slow down either Reggie Miller or Jalen Rose this series, losing 2-4. In the postseason, Ratliff averaged 13 points, 3 blocks, and 7.9 rebounds. Next season, Theo Ratliff would only continue stepping up his play, having his best career year. Theo Ratliff would average 12.4 points, 8.3 rebounds, and a league-leading 3.7 blocks a game, helping earn himself an all-star appearance. But he would not be able to go and play in the game because he had broken his wrist. Now, the 76ers were playing well at the time and still wanting to compete, and Ratliff not being able to go really hurt the team's chances of competing this year. So the 76ers would make a very tough decision. The 76ers would trade the injured Theo Ratliff with Tony Kukoc, Nazi Muhammad, and Pepe Sanchez to the Atlanta Hawks for Rashawn McLeod and the centerpiece of the trade in Dikembe Mutombo. Theo Ratliff was joining a struggling Hawks team led by Jason Terry. But Ratliff would miss the rest of the year with the injury he picked up in Philly, seeing the Hawks go 25-57 and 57, missing the playoffs. The Hawks in the offseason would make a move to improve in the immediate year in trading for Sharif Abdurrahim, but it would be at a steep price in trading away Pau Gasol. Early into the year, Theo Ratliff would pick up another season-ending injury where he would undergo surgery to remove cartilage tear in his hip. On the season, Theo Ratliff would only play in three games for the Hawks, where he averaged 8.7 points, 2.7 blocks, and 5.3 rebounds. Without Ratliff again, the Hawks would struggle going 33-49, and 49, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Atlanta would improve its roster again in trading for Glenn Robinson. With Robinson's addition, Ratliff would now be the fourth option on the team, but he would be healthy this year and seem to be back like he had never gotten injured. Theo Ratliff would average 8.7 points, 7.5 rebounds, and lead the league in blocks again with 3.2 a game. But despite Ratliff finally being able to go to the, for the Hawks, they were still struggling going 35-47, and 47, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, the Hawks would trade away Glenn Robinson and would replace him with Steven Jackson in free agency. Again, Ratliff would find himself playing the similar role to the year prior, but the Hawks were doing even worse this go-around. As a result, the Hawks would decide to shake things up. Theo Ratliff would be traded by the Atlanta Hawks with Sharif Abdurrahim and Dan Dickow to the Portland Trailblazers for Wesley Person and Rashid Wallace. Ratliff would find himself joining a Trailblazers team now led by Zach Randolph. As a result of the trade, Theo Ratliff would find himself playing in a league-leading 85 games this season, where he would average 7.9 points, 7.2 rebounds, and again lead the league in blocks with 3.6 a game. As a result, he would make NBA All-Defensive second team. With Ratliff on the Blazers now, they would do okay going 41-41, and but miss the playoffs. In the offseason, Theo Ratliff would sign a contract extension to stay in Portland, but next year, Theo Ratliff would start to show signs of aging, and as a result, midway through the season, Ratliff would lose his starting job, seeing his averages drop to 4.8 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks, as the Trailblazers would take a step back this year as well, going 27-55, and 55, missing the playoffs. Next year, Ratliff would find himself playing less minutes with a reduced role because Portland wanted to go younger since they were not competing. Despite the reduced role, Ratliff would be a good mentor and still play well when his number was called, averaging 4.9 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 1.6 blocks, as the Trailblazers along the way would go 21-61, and 61, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, the Trailblazers would trade away Theo Ratliff along with Sebastian Telfair, a second-round pick that would go on to be Trent Blaze's 
to the Boston Celtics for Dan Dickow, Randy Foy, and Rafe LaFrance. Ratliff was now joining a struggling Celtics team led by Paul Pierce and Al Jefferson, but Theo Ratliff again would get bit by the injury bug, resulting in Theo Ratliff playing in only two games on the year for the Celtics where he scored 2.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks. All the while, the Celtics went 24-58 and missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Theo Ratliff would be traded away as a trade ship in a league-altering deal. Theo Ratliff would be traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves with Ryan Gomes, Gerald Green, Al Jefferson, Sebastian Telfair, and two first-round picks that would be Wayne Ellington and Johnny Flynn for Kevin Garnett helping create a super team in Boston. Now Theo Ratliff, on the other hand, would find himself playing more than he did ever in Boston and Minnesota, but still sparingly. On the other hand, Theo Ratliff did not quite fit the Timberwolves timeline and his contract was tough to move, so the Minnesota Timberwolves would decide to waive him. Theo Ratliff would decide to go on and sign for a competitor and would go back to where his career started in the Detroit Pistons. Ratliff would be brought in to play a backup center role and he would be joining a Pistons team led by Richard Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince, Chauncey Billups, and Rasheed Wallace. And for the season between Detroit and Minnesota, Ratliff would average 4.3 points, 1.4 blocks, and 3.4 rebounds, seeing the Pistons go 59-23 and entering the playoffs as a two-seed, where Ratliff would be facing his former team in the 76ers in round one with Andre Iguodala and Andre Miller. The 76ers would win a couple of games going up 2-1, but it only seemed to wake up the Pistons team as they would rattle off the next three games, advancing 4-2. In round two, the Pistons would get a matchup against the Orlando Magic, who had Dwight Howard, Richard Lewis, Hito Turkoglu, and Jameer Nelson. The series would ultimately be all the Pistons, though, with Richard Hamilton elevating his game when Chauncey Billups went down, helping propel the Pistons to the Eastern Conference Finals, winning 4-1. In the Eastern Conference Finals, the Pistons would meet yet another one of Theo Ratliff's former teams in the Boston Celtics, who now had Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Rajon Rondo, and Paul Pierce leading them. Chauncey Billups would return this series, but it would ultimately not be enough as the Celtics' newly formed core was clicking at their best this series, seeing the Celtics win 4-2 and eventually going on to become NBA champions. Theo Ratliff on the run to the Eastern Conference Finals, averaged 1.3 points, 0.9 blocks, and 2.3 rebounds. In the offseason, Theo Ratliff was a free agent and would find himself again going back to his old stomping grounds in Philadelphia. The 76ers now had Andre Miller, Elton Brand, Thaddeus Young, and Andre Iguodala heading the team. Ratliff would find himself being the third string center on the team, providing minutes when the team needed him to. Theo Ratliff would average 1.9 points, 2.8 rebounds, and one block a game helping see the 76ers go 41-41 and getting into the playoffs as a sixth seed. They would face the Orlando Magic in round one, who looked similar to the year prior, but Dwight Howard had only seemed to improve his game. Now the 76ers would pick up a couple of games with Howard missing some time due to injury, but Richard Lewis would step up his play in Howard's absence, sending the 76ers home 4-2. Over the series, Theo Ratliff averaged 3.3 points, .7 blocks, and 3.8 rebounds. Entering free agency again in the offseason, Theo Ratliff would find himself joining another new team in the San Antonio Spurs, which were competing for rings led by Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Tim Duncan. Ratliff again had been brought in to be the third string center off the bench. Theo Ratliff would look well when he was playing, but ultimately not break the rotation frequently. As a result, the Spurs would trade away Theo Ratliff to the Charlotte Bobcats for a second round pick. Ratliff would be joining a Bobcats team led by Gerald Wallace and Steven Jackson that was trying to get back into the playoffs for the first time in a long time, and Ratliff was viewed as the piece to help them compete, finding himself becoming a starter again. Theo Ratliff over the two teams this year would see his averages increase as a result to 3.6 points, 1.2 blocks, and 3.2 rebounds, helping the Bobcats go 44-38, and making the playoffs as a 7 seed, getting a matchup against the Orlando Magic in round 1. He looks slightly different this go-around than years past with Vince Carter on the team now, helping out Dwight Howard. It was a great success that the Bobcats had made it to this series, but they would look overwhelmed from start to finish, getting swept and sent home. Over the series, Theo Ratliff would average 1.8 points and 0.8 rebounds. 
in the offseason, Ratliff again was a free agent, and he would decide to ring Chase, joining the NBA champions in the prior year in the Los Angeles Lakers, who had Kobe Bryant, Pau Gasol, Andrew Bynum, and Lamar Odom leading them. Theo Ratliff would find himself playing sparingly this year, though, only in 10 games, with age catching up to him, seeing an average 0.2 points, 0.5 blocks, and 1.3 rebounds. But at least he was on a competitive Lakers team that would go 57 and 25, making the playoffs as a two seed. In round one, the Lakers would face Chris Paul and the New Orleans Hornets. Chris Paul would provide challenges at times for the Lakers this series, but it wasn't anything they couldn't deal with, with the Lakers winning 4 to 2. In round two, the Lakers would get the Dallas Mavericks and Dirk Nowinski, who was playing at an all time best alongside Jason Terry. Dirk Nowinski would put on a display this series, doing it all, and shockingly, the Lakers seemed to be crumbling, being a shell of their championship form, getting swept by the Mavericks altogether, who would go on to win the NBA championship. Over the postseason, though, Theo Ratliff would play in one game in garbage time. Theo Ratliff could see the signs on the wall and would decide to retire after the year at the age of 37. Theo Ratliff, over his 16-year career, would average 7.2 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 2.4 blocks. Ratliff will be remembered as a defensive specialist who had an ability to block shots like no one else, helping him become an all-star two times on an all-defensive team and led the league in blocks three separate times, being a journeyman along the way, playing for numerous teams, providing whatever the team asked of him to do with a good spirit whether it was a playoff team or a bottom dweller. Regardless, everyone was invited to Theo Ratliff's block party. Thanks for watching this video on Theo Ratliff's career, and if you want to see any other videos about random players in the future, leave them in the comments below, and I may or may not decide to do a video on them. Thanks again for watching, this has been Skid Denver.